Hello everyone, today we will be looking at uh, the tactic that Shinshonji uses where they commit the burden of proof fallacy. So if there are people that doubt Shinshonji's claims or people that do not accept Shinshonji's claims, then Shinshonji will commonly shift the burden of proof on those people by telling them to disprove their claims. And then the, if those people can't disprove their claims, then Shinshonji will think Therefore, their claims are true, and they'll try to co convince people that are doubtful in the organization, that are asking questions, that since they can't disprove the claims of Shinshonji, therefore, Shinshonji must be true. And I'll show you why this is actually fallacious reasoning. It's pretty obvious. It's just if people aren't educated in logic and critical thinking, this might be, you know, not that apparent or not clear at the beginning. So the burden of proof is something that is found within the philosophical field of logic as well as within the legal system. If I take you to court um, and I make the claim that you committed a crime, then the burden of proof lies upon me to provide evidence for my claim that you committed the crime. And that's how it works in a court of law. Uh, so if you look at the description uh, of the video below, I posted some links that explains the burden of proof. That also explains the concept of unfalsifiable or untestable ideas and how the key to being right is trying to prove yourself wrong. It's rather counterintuitive, but perhaps you should try it. Um, so the, just to kind of make things clear, the burden of proof is the responsibility to provide evidence for a claim. And this applies to both positive claims as well as negative claims. A positive claim is regarding the existence or inclusion of something, where a negative claim is regarding the non-existence or exclusion of something. So a common thing that SEJ does, as I've mentioned before, is that they will shift the burden of proof. They will ask you to disprove their claims. And if you can't do it, they'll think, therefore, it is true. Of course, the obvious problem with this is that your ignorance is not evidence for their claims. Ignorance is not evidence. If you appeal to your own ignorance or the ignorance of other people to justify a conclusion, then you are committing an appeal to ignorance fallacy. And I think this is actually pretty obvious that ignorance isn't evidence, but you'll find this very commonly, uh, um, this fallacy being committed by SEJ as well as many other people and organizations in the world. So I wanted to uh, uh, do a bit of a thought experiment with you um, and perhaps that might give you deeper perspective on why shifting the burden of proof is fallacious. I'm going to make a claim now. So imagine I'm making the claim to you that there is a fire-breathing dragon in my garage. Let's go to the garage. Let's investigate. And then when we get there, you see there's no dragon in the garage. You can't see anything. So you ask me, where's the dragon? I tell you, no, 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 no. This dragon is invisible. So then you think, oh, there must be another way to detect this dragon. So then what you do is you bring in infrared equipment to try to detect heat because there's this fire-breathing dragon. He breathes fire. So then what you do is you try to, with this equipment, detect heat. But then I once again respond by saying, no, 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 no. This fire that the dragon breathes is heatless. So now you think of another way. Maybe there's a way to detect the footprints of the dragon. So you go, you take some flour and you spread it all throughout the garage to try to detect its footprints. But then I respond by saying, no, 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 no. This dragon flies around, so you won't be able to detect its footprints on the floor. So now you maybe think of another way. And maybe you think, oh, I'll, you know, this is an invisible dragon. Maybe you should take some spray paint. I'm going to take some spray paint. I'm going to spray it everywhere. And then that will make this invisible dragon visible. But then I once again respond by saying, no, 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 no. This dragon is immaterial. So if you sp spray paint won't work on it. It's immaterial. It doesn't consist of matter. The problem is, every single time you try to test my idea, I made it untestable. I've now given you an untestable idea, meaning that it's impossible to verify it, prove it to be right or true, and it's also impossible to falsify it, prove it to be wrong or false. I've given you an untestable idea, so now we're stuck. 
And now let me, I made the claim, this dragon exists. And now I shift the burden of proof. I tell you, you should disprove it. Can you disprove it? No, it's untestable. This, this dragon claim, the, existence of the, of the claim of the existence of this dragon, is immune to evidence. So, because you can't disprove it, does it mean that there's a good reason to believe that it's true? Does it mean that my belief is justified? The fact that you can't disprove it? Once again, your ignorance is not evidence for my claim. I still need to provide evidence, justification, for why my claim is true. So now, if I shift the burden of proof, you can't disprove it. If we're allowed to shift the burden of proof, if it wasn't considered to be fallacious, then it means this dragon now exists. I'm justified in my belief. But wait a minute, what if you now respond back by using it back on me? And then what you do is you say, this dragon does not exist. You make a negative claim. Well, I made a positive claim about its existence. You make a negative claim about its non-existence. And then you tell me to prove that it exists. To show that it actually does exist and that, his, that your claim is false. But I can't prove it either. If we're allowed to shift the burden of proof, then it would mean that this dragon also now doesn't exist. So if we're both allowed to shift the burden of proof, we could prove both the existence and the non-existence of this dragon. And of course, this dragon either exists or does not exist. It cannot both be true. It's illogical. It would be a contradiction. And this is one of the ways, if you allow for the burden of proof to be shifted, that you, would, you could justify contradictory claims. You could also justify belief in imaginary things. And this is a problem. A lot of SEJ's ideas or claims are untestable. It's unfalsifiable. And if they shift the burden of proof on you, you'll always lose. But once again, it's fallacious. And you not being able to disprove something, your ignorance is not evidence for their claims. This is really obvious. And this is why a lot of the, if you want to debate with them about these untestable ideas, it's a waste of time. Uh, you can try if you want. I mean, I'm not going to stop you. I'm just saying, logically, it's a waste of time. So you should demand evidence for the claims that they make. Don't allow them to shift the burden of proof. Shift the burden back on them. The burden should be on them. And remember that claims without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. If they make a claim without evidence, you can simply dismiss the claim. You don't need to continue in the conversation. They haven't justified their claims. So a lot of times when it comes to untestable ideas, we should take the position that unless there is good reason to believe, if there isn't good reason, then it's not justified. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily false. It means that there's no good reason to believe that it's true. And one could argue, perhaps they could respond by saying, yeah, sometimes, even though we don't have clear evidence, it might be true. That is the case, yes. Sometimes speculation or guessing could be true. But generally speaking, speculation or guessing is not a reliable pathway to truth within itself. I can also make stuff up all the time. Some of it might even be true. I mean, there's people that had wild ideas thousands of years ago, and it could be argued that perhaps later it was discovered to be true. They didn't know it was true. They just guessed. It just so happens to be true. Like, let's say, for example, I now say that there's a flying teapot orbiting uh, Mars. Disprove it. I'm sure you can't disprove this. That doesn't mean that I'm justified to believe that it's true. But now imagine it's actually true. Even if it's actually true that there is a flying teapot orbit, orbiting Mars, even if it's actually true, my belief is still not rational because I don't actually have good reason and evidence to believe it. Therefore, believing in what is true is not always rational. Rather, believing what is known to be true, what can be demonstrated to be true, is always rational. So it's not just about guessing, because sometimes guessing can also be true. But guessing is not a reliable pathway to understanding the way that the world works. So whenever there's a lot of people that have contacted me where they will meet uh, um, their leaders, maybe they're doubting, their leaders want to meet them, and then they freak out because their leaders are constantly trying to get them to disprove ACJ and make them feel guilty for not being able to disprove it. And then tell them, oh, why did you doubt? You can't disprove it, it must be true. 
You don't need to do that. Actually, it's, I, I would argue it's a waste of time to try to do that because most of their ideas are untestable. Demand evidence for their claims. If they can't provide evidence for their claims, that means that their beliefs are unjustified. That means that there was no good reason to believe that it's true. So then what do we do when, we, when there is an untestable idea and there's no way to confirm it? It's very, very simple. You do the intellectually humble and honest thing. By saying, I don't know. That's what intellectual people do. They recognize the extent of what we can know and what we can't know. And they're honest about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I hope that this can empower you to ultimately discern for yourself.